So in between one of the many projects that I have going, I must have woken up one day and decided that I wanted to waste a whole bunch of time. I wanted to waste that time on something stupid, pointless, and absolutely useless, but somehow still be productive and kind of cool. What did I end up creating? A way to monitor 3D prints from a real life 3D printer inside of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So what you're seeing right now is just that, although it's sped up. This is a real-time 3D print monitor from my Ender 3 showing exactly what it's printing inside of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is powered using vScript, a custom C-sharp application, and a whole lot of stupidity. So stick around and I'll take you through it. The custom level consists of a few components. We have a black volume that represents the print bed of the 3D printer. We have the temperature and status message along with some statistics about the current print CSGO. Then there's the start print button, but we can't use that yet. This is the Octoprint user interface. If you're unfamiliar with Octoprint, it is what takes our dumb 3D printer and makes it smart. Once we have a nice and smart 3D printer, we can connect a virtual printer to it. The virtual printer does not have to follow the laws of physics, so for demonstration purposes, it is much faster. Right here, you can see a preview of a 3D print file that will be sent to the 3D printer and to Counter-Strike a little bit later, but this is just a nice little preview system inside of the web interface of Octoprint. And here's a file actually printing. This is the Benchy that we just saw the preview of a little bit ago inside of the Octoprint UI. Here that little preview is again. I'll put this little preview over to the side while I go over some setup and nerd shit that most of you probably don't care about at all. This is the c -sharp program. If you know anything about programming, you can see already that there's some hard-coded passwords and variables to find at the top. I never said this software was good, I said it works. So I'm going to run it right in debug mode from Visual Studio. Once the application starts, it will attempt to connect to Octoprint over SSH and Counter-Strike over Telnet. If either of those aren't running, the application will likely just crash. Once we have the custom level loaded, we'll just MP restart game to get the level vscript talking to the C Sharp application. In that little terminal window down below, we can see that the map has asked Octoprint for what files currently live on the Octoprint server that are available for printing. This is the temperature readout for the printer. Right now it's at 21.3 degrees. We can see some temperature messages sneaking up in the terminal window at the bottom. Here I can ask Octoprint to increase the temperature of our 3D printer and we'll see the temperature start to climb inside of the Counter-Strike level as well. Next, we have the file selection menu over to the right. This list is generated on map start. It asks Octoprint for all of the files that it has, and we can select them by looking and then attacking one of the squares. When we're ready to start the print, we just hit use on the big red button. The map will send the start print instruction over to Octoprint, and we start to see that a lot more temperature messages are coming through. The bed temp has raised to 72 degrees on the virtual printer. It has told us it's going to use 3.85 grams of plastic. The print head is also increasing in temperature to the target for this file, which should be 245 degrees. With the print temperatures at the target temperature of 245 head, 72 bed, the print will now take place. We can see the visualization going as well as the commands showing up in the terminal window of the communication between Octoprint and Counter-Strike. Octoprint has the option to show us a layer by layer preview of this file. Obviously it's printing extremely quickly because this is the virtual printer which does not obey the laws of physics and the model is extremely simple. For comparison, here is a model being printed on a real 3D printer that has to obey the laws of physics. As you can see, it takes extremely long just to lay down one single layer. The process is overall very slow, which is why we're using the virtual printer to show you guys how this works. Anyways, so I'm able to cancel the print inside of Octoprint, and since Octoprint was the thing feeding these commands into Counter-Strike, the print also stops in Counter-Strike. So this is a error model that I sell on Etsy inside of the 3D printer slicer Simplify 3D, which is what converts the model into 3D printer code. 
after I save and then upload the file to the Octoprint instance that is talking to Counter-Strike, we can print this inside of CSGO. To see the newly uploaded file, I have to MP restart game to have Octoprint resend the new file list, and then we can see it over there, error new.gcode, which is the file that was just uploaded. I can now switch into Octoprint and click print over here and the CSGO level will start printing as well. Since this is a file that was generated for one of my real 3D printers, we'll have to have the temperatures reach their target temp. Since this is the virtual printer, it is much faster. Once the temperatures have been reached, the print will start and this is the error model exactly as it would print on my real printer. I've sped this up because it still takes a while even in the virtual printer, but you may be asking yourself, what, what is the point now? Well, there is no point. There has never been a point. This project is really stupid. But to bring back a boomer meme, yo dog, I heard you like dust too. So you better believe that's what happened. I put Dust 2 3D printer inside of Dust 2 so you can print Dust 2 while you play Dust 2 in your Dust 2 only CSGO competitive queue. It is the peak of Counter-Strike where you can be inside of Dust 2 inside of Dust 2. There's never been a more perfect update. You gotta give the people what they want and the people want Dust 2. You can't give them Dust 3 because Dust 3 isn't Dust 2 and besides Valve can't even count to 3. So you just give them Dust 2 inside of Dust 2. It's the pinnacle, it's peak, it's performance. It's perfect Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Which is something that I would say, but as you can probably see up in the top left, this uses debug lines to draw the actual model of the 3D print, and it tanks the FPS of the game client. I'm at 18 FPS right now on a 3090. It runs like garbage. This is a cool project, but it's ultimately useless and absolutely coded like crap. My original intention was to work through the code and kind of explain how it all works, but it didn't turn out to be all that interesting or even fun to do. So I've decided to put all of the code on GitHub, which you can find here if you think this is interesting. I've added comments to a lot of it, so it should be pretty self-explanatory and you should be able to figure out exactly what it's doing. Oh yeah, and I wanted to tap into the low effort content market, so if you go to my channel and scroll down, you'll see my Info Player Top Hat Waffle button there, or under the Channels tab, you can click on Info Player Top Hat Waffle. This channel exists mostly for low effort content or stuff that isn't really applicable to the main channel, like reviews or gameplay footage and Beat Saber and stuff like that. That's all for this one. I don't think you learned anything because it wasn't a tutorial, but I hope you enjoyed my stupid project. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.